Hi there. Well, it's not news to anybody if you're in greater Cincinnati this June that it is the cicada. 17 year cycle. This is the third one I've been through living here in Cincinnati and it is amazing. For some details on them, I'm here with April, who's a keeper in our insectarium, <laughs> who's real excited about these. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. thrilled. So I've been here my entire life, so I've seen, technically seen three cycles, but I was one for the first one, so I don't remember that one. But I remember the 2004 cycle, and it was insane. I was so excited for them to come out this year. Yeah. We've been like waiting for them. Well, they're here in abundance. I know you and I are yeah. on top of those cast off exoskeletons. Yeah. Up, <laughs> hundreds of thousands just under this one tree. We can hear them like crazy, even though it's in the morning. Later in the day when the sun's real hot, they might get louder. Oh yeah. Yeah, once it gets warm out, because you can tell by the temperature usually, you know, how loud they're gonna be. Um, the other day when it was cool out, there was like no sound. And we got that like slightly cool snap. Exactly. But yeah, now that it's getting warmer and staying warmer, they're starting to get a lot louder. Some people ask, well, how come they're real loud in someone's yard, but they're not loud in my yard? So what are the, the things that you think make them in some areas and not in others? I mean, it just depends on where they lay their eggs. Yeah. Um, you know, it's probably just a physical amount of cicadas is the reason why they're not as loud in some people's yards as others. Uh, the issue too is, you know, these guys have been underground for 17 years. So any development or anything that's been done could possibly have disturbed them. So a lot of newer developed areas don't have a lot of cicadas because, you know, the ground's been tore up. Um, sure. Yeah, I know. For instance, we live in a neighborhood that's that's older with lots of older trees. Things probably haven't been disturbed, to be honest, for about a, a century. And I mean, we are inundated with them versus if, say, down in OTR, there's not much natural soil anyway, and everything's gotten built in the last 17 years. So, yeah, so some of that would be a driver as well. Now, the neat thing is they aren't really a bother to humans, right? They're not a pest. They're, they don't bite. Um, some people are grossed out by them, though. but share some more of your excitement about them. I don't know, we got to go out. Um, so we actually came out to the centroid area here um, when they first started popping out. Yeah. So we were seeing all the nymphs crawl along the ground, climb up, perch up, watching a molt. Yeah. Um, it's crazy and at my house it's like this too and I was standing outside and I just had probably like every five minutes I had to brush some off my leg because they were all just starting to crawl up. And it's just, it's, well one, it's the largest in insect emergence in the world, yeah. which is crazy. And it's so cool that we get to see it. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. I, I like bugs and I know a lot of people, you know, are kind of afraid of bugs, but they're not gonna bother you. They're gonna stay away from you for the most part. Um, even if they do land on you, they'll fly right away. They're bad flyers, which is usually why they land on people or bump into yeah. people. You know, a thing I've wondered about, many insect species, you'll hear about that there are less of them, whether that's monarch butterflies or fireflies than there used to be. Are the numbers affected in the same way with cicadas? You know? Yeah, cicadas are gonna be no different from any other insect that has, you know, population issues. Like we're building, we're developing more things. I mean, all these, you know, like I said, they're underground for 17 years. They can't adjust as quickly to changing environments that other ones can. They do that so they don't have to worry about adjusting to predator and prey and things like that. But it hurts them when, because, you know, there's not a ton of natural habitat left. Mm. So it's getting dug up, that's a problem. Um, there's also too, there's been a brood that's gone extinct. Um, oh. Brood 11 has actually gone extinct because one of the biggest things with these two is their only source of defense is the amount mm. that come out. It's predator satiation. Yeah. Like it's just to make sure that the predators can eat as much as they want and there's still tons to breed. So at some point, you know, we'll get down to a number where there's not enough left to breed after all the predators have eaten. But there are things certainly to celebrate. You know, the Cincinnati Zoo was the first zoo anywhere to have a major insectarium, a freestanding center just to celebrate the importance of insects. And to this day, it's still one of the best insectariums anywhere in the world. The zoo's here sure to show big mammals, but also to teach about biodiversity and the way nature works. And there's a great celebration right here in the Midwest right now is the celebration of the 17-year cicada.